What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of the ultimate do-it-yourself LED light for planted aquariums. In this video we're going to be talking about uh, preparing the components for assembly. So we're going to be wiring up the driver, we're going to be soldering the pads on the LEDs uh, to make it easier to solder wires to them later on. We're going to talk about um, how to wire in a potentiometer to the driver and we're going to go over the fans and how I got those all set up. And we are going to measure out on the heatsink itself uh, where the LEDs are going to go. We're not going to be assembling the light in this video, that will be in the next video. All we're doing in this video is getting things ready for assemblies. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of this project. Number one being RapidLED.com. They sponsored me with the driver and the LEDs for this build. Um, give a huge shout out to them, RapidLED.com. They have everything you need to build your own light like this one. So head on over there and uh, they have a great customer service department so if you have any questions give them a call and they can help you pick out the parts for the build for you and then also makersled.com they supply the housing for this build you'll be seeing that later on in this video so huge shout out to rapidled.com and makersled.com without this without them this project simply would not be possible so let's get right into it so the first thing we got to do is cut off the end of this extension cord so like I mentioned in part one of the build you need the extension cord to be able to plug the driver into the wall so you need this end this is a good end, this is an end that you don't need. So we gotta cut this end off. Uh, since I am a little bit of a hoarder and I like keeping things, I'm gonna give myself a little extra wire here in case I ever need this for another project. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room to splice it just in case I ever need it. So I'm just gonna give that cut right there in the middle. So that leaves us with three wires, which is exactly what we need because the driver has three wires. So all we need to do is pull back this insulation and strip those wires and uh, I'll be right back. Well, let me do that real quick off camera. All right, so I got that stripped and the wires exposed. So now all we have to do is take the driver and splice these wires in with these wires. So I'm gonna do that now. Alright guys, before I go ahead and splice these wires together, I wanted to show you which goes where. Um, it took me a little bit of while, a little while to find this information, so I wanted to make it easy to find for you. So, basically, this is the extension cord that we cut the end off. This one has a black wire, a white wire, and a green wire. <clears throat> and this is the driver itself, the LED driver. Uh, this one has a brown wire, a blue wire, and a green wire. So, the way it goes is black to brown, blue to white, and green to green. So, just like that. So. I'm gonna solder, heat shrink, and uh, get these all wired up, and I'll be right back. Well, I got that done. I got those wires spliced in together. Um, I insulated them with electrical tape, and then electric tape the entire thing, and then put heat shrink on the outside. So I did test it. It works great. Uh, you test the, with a multimeter. You test these two leads, and I was getting 310 volts, which, if you look at the output rating of this power supply, is 305 volts. So that's right where we need to be. So. Totally worked, I was a little nervous, honestly, I've never really worked with AC power before, so it was a little nerve wracking, but just followed the directions on the internet and it worked out fine. So now what we're gonna do is um, the cable I was talking about in part one, the four, the 414, four gauge, or four 14 gauge wires in one cable. We're gonna wire that up to these two leads. This, these two leads are to the LEDs themselves, the positive and negative, and this is for a potentiometer. Um, like I talked about in part one, the potentiometer is going to be mounted to the, the housing itself so I can dim the, dim the entire fixture while standing up looking at the tank. Um, I could simply wire a potentiometer right here to these two leads and have it be under the tank. It'd probably be easier that way, but uh, I, want it, I want the potentiometer up top. So that's what I'm going to work on now. So we're going to wire these two into the uh, cable. So I'll be right back. All right guys, so this is that cable I was just talking about. This is the 414 wire, which means 414 cable, which basically means there's four 14 gauge wires in the cable. A cable is a cable is made up of multiple wires. A wire is a single wire. So just a little terminology there for you. Um, so what I'm going to be end up doing is this is the driver itself. So like I said in the last part, the, the red is positive, black is negative for the LEDs. And then white and blue are the potentiometer. Blue is positive, white is negative for the potentiometer. Um, so what I'm going to do is wire the black and red to the black and red cables, the wires of this cable. And then I'm going to take the blue and white and wire those to the green and white of the cable. So this way 
this will run up to the fixture itself. This is how I'm getting the getting the, the electricity from the driver to the fixture itself. So I'm going to do that now. Wire these all in here and get that all uh, looking pretty. So I'll be right back. All right guys, so I got that done. Got these two leads wired into this one cable. Um, I didn't have any heat shrink big enough to cover the whole thing, so I just wrapped it really well with uh, electrical tape. Wrapping each individual solder point with the, uh, the electrical tape, and then wrapping the two wires from one lead together uh, on each side, and then wrapping the whole thing together. So this thing is quite insulated. I think it's gonna be just fine. I wish I did have uh, heat shrink big enough. I might you know, go get some before I, uh, I close off the other end of this cable so I could slide, slide the heat shrink in here and go all the way around and get it on. I'm probably gonna do that. Uh, I don't like leaving electrical tape exposed. Um, so that's probably what I'm up doing. But the driver is done. We got the we got the uh, AC end wired up, so it plugs into the wall now. And then we got the DC end wired up, so this is what this is the lead that actually goes to the the unit itself, the uh, the fixture. Um, so I'm gonna test it right now. Um, it should all be fine. I would like to wire in the potentiometer to those two wires first just to try it you know I'm, I like testing everything before I do it you know do a dry run of everything that way when you go to do the actual uh, when you actually go to do it for reals you don't have any surprises so probably gonna do that just for uh, sake of mind but uh, the next step is going to be um, preparing all the LEDs to be soldered you don't want to put solder on them while they're on the heat sink because the heat sink draws out heat and you need heat to solder so soldering on a heat sink does not work very well. So you want to solder them on usually a piece of wood or table or workspace, something that does that's insulated, something that won't uh, draw the heat away from the soldering pad. So we're gonna do that next. So I have about uh, 75 LEDs to uh, get ready. It's gonna be long and tedious, but you're gonna come along the journey with me. I won't make you sit through all 70 of the LEDs, obviously, but I'll show you what to do and. Uh, we're also going to test each LED, make sure it works before we go to put it in the housing. Like I said, you got to test everything before you, uh, you know, give it a dry run before you, you go all the way. So we're going to do that. And uh, so yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So what we're going to be doing right now is testing each LED, making sure it works before we put it in the uh, heat sink housing. Uh, we're also going to be soldering the, the solder pads, um, preparing them for solder so it'll be easier to wire later on. So what we're going to do first is we're going to break one of these off, this little tree guy. And then you take your multimeter and in the position here, let's see, there we go. In this position, it's kind of like a little arrow pointing at a plus sign. I'm not sure what it's called, but that's the that gives you a, a little bit of output from the multimeter. But it'll be just enough to light up the LED for testing. So you take the leads, you put positive or uh, negative, negative, and positive, 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 and you can see that it lights up. And do the other side, cross, cross. So you can see here that this LED is 100% functional. So with that out of the way, we can now solder the pads. We can put solder on the pads so that when the LED is mounted on the heatsink, it'll be much easier to uh, solder the wire onto the pad. If there's no solder on these pads, when you go to wire the LED, or when you go to wire it, uh, you have to get the pad very hot for it to accept the solder. So with it being mounted to a heat sink, the heat sink takes away that heat, so it would be uh, a lot more difficult to, to do this while, with it mounted on a heat sink, so that's why we do it here. So first thing you're going to do, the first pad with the, with the diode being room temperature, it is a little bit, uh, takes a little bit longer to do the first one, so you put the um, soldering iron on the first pad for a few seconds first, and then you go put the solder on. You can see here it's not quite ready yet, it'll go once it warms up, see, there it go. It's just warmed up. There it goes. All right, so now it goes right on, no problem. The other pads, with the, with the uh, diode already being hot, the other pads are much easier. So imagine trying to do this with the diode mounted to a heat sink, literally stealing the heat away from the diode. So that's what it's designed to do. So this pad is giving me a little bit of a hard time. There it goes. All right, so with each of those pads pre-soldered, make it much easier to wire it later on once it's mounted in the heat sink. But we're not done with this one yet. We gotta test it, make sure we didn't just ruin it. So positive to positive, negative, negative. You can see there it lights up, lights up, cross and cross. And this LED is 100% wired. So I only need to do this 73 more times. And uh, so 
just put on a movie, relax, and uh, yeah, just do one at a time. All right, guys. I will through the through the uh, magic of editing. It'll be just a few seconds for you. It's gonna be probably all night for me, but uh, I'll get back to you when I'm done. All right, guys. See you in a sec. All right. So that took about an hour and a half. Not too bad. Once you do the first 20 or 30, you get kind of a, uh, a groove. It goes a lot faster. So. Um, also, when you're not trying to record it, it goes a lot faster too. So I put all of them in individual uh, bags. These are marked, you know, red, 3000K, green, white. Um, so you can see here, we can't. Nope. Anyway, you can see there that all the pads have been tinted, pre-soldered, the little uh, solder pads on there. So when you go to wire them, when they're actually mounted on the heatsink, it will go a lot smoother. Uh, I used almost three tubes of solder. Uh, so a lot, a lot more solder than I thought. This is all the solder I got for this entire project. So I'm going to need more solder. Um, I only had one kind of mistake. Uh, I guess you can't. I, I gotta be careful. You can't let the the, the, um, the pads get too hot because this the diode actually popped off the uh, substrate itself. I guess this got a little too hot and I bumped the diode and it just kind of fell off. So. Um, once I did that, I was a little more careful about not letting them get too hot. Um, so, but other than that, it went pretty smooth. The, I got like a little, the the solder kind of spits every once in a while, so my desk is covered in little solder spitting whatever something flux. I don't know what it is, but uh, burned my hand twice, so that's pretty good. I mean, it's not so bad. I figure there's four pads in each one of these, and I had 92, 96 LEDs. It's four times 96. Rounded up to 100, it's like just under 400 little solder points. So, knock that out. I think I mentioned in just under an hour and a half. So, wasn't so bad. All right. Well, the next thing I want to talk about before this, there's two more things I want to talk about before this video is end uh, is over. I want to talk about the fans and how I power those, and uh, and then I also want to measure out the uh, measure out where I'm going to put the lights on the heatsink itself. So, now this is a huge hurdle. You know, this is probably the most tedious part other than wiring. Uh, so this is a huge check off check mark off this, uh, this project. So making progress and getting there. All right, well let me reset and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with these fans. All right, be right back. All right, so these are the fans I'm gonna be using to cool this heat sink. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need them. Like I mentioned in the first part, I did touch on these really briefly in the first part of this build log, but I wanted to address them a little bit more closely because some people might not know what to do with these. So they're pretty simple. Um, all they are 12 volt fans. So most these are computer fans. First of all, they're 120 millimeter fans. They're the most common computer fan size. Um, so they run 12 volts. So all I did was I took a 12 volt power brick. And you probably have a few of these laying around your house. This one is 12 volts at 1500 milliamps or 1.5 amps. So this is perfect to run these little guys. I think they draw like 0.35 amps each. So 350 milliamps. So this power supply could run almost five of these fans. So Two is easy enough for this power supply. The thing I like about these fans a lot is that they have a low high, high low uh, fan speed controller. So they go from I think 1500 RPM down to like 800 RPM. So they're really really quiet. Um, they also have rubberized feet that actually mount to the heatsink itself. Um, I'll show you how I'm gonna mount those when it comes time to uh, mount them on the heatsink. That'll be in probably part three or four. Um, so yeah, they're really easy. On so. There's a three three prong three pin fan connector right here, and all I did is took a, a Y splitter, so a Y splitter here that goes there, so that gives you two, and then you just plug the fans each fan into here, and that's how you that's how I'm gonna be powering these fans. So that's it, just like that. So this gets plugged into the wall, and then the wire goes up to the up to the fixture, and the fans spin. Pretty simple. Uh, let me grab the heatsink and we'll start measuring out and figuring out where to put the LEDs and and uh, really start assembling this thing. So, all right, guys, I'll be right back. All right, guys. So, I finally finished measuring out where all the LEDs are gonna go. Um, it took about two hours. A lot of you can see here, like this mark here is. I'm not sure if it comes up on camera yet, but it does. Um, that was a mistake, error, mistake, mistake. So every everywhere where I wanted an LED to go. There is a silver cross, or silver X, whatever you want to call it, uh, where each LED goes. Except these ones, I haven't done these ones yet. This is a 
to be determined, these guys here. These ones here, they're like these. They all have a spot. So, it looks complicated, I know. You're like, holy cow, what's going on? But, so the, the ones that are in a line, these ones, these ones, these ones, the ones that are all in a row, going all the way across are the white ones. Those are the 6700Ks. The ones in the middle, this one, this one, this one, and so on. Those are red. Those are red ones. And then, this is green. We'll call it yellow. So 3000K. So green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, and so on. So they alternate like that. So green, yellow, green, yellow. So when you break it down like that, so uh, white, 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 yellow, red, white, 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 red, green. White, 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 yellow, red. So kind of complicated. I honestly don't know how I'm going to wire this up yet. I'm just going to get mounted and then kind of figure out as I go. Because like I said, I am mounting these in series, so they all have to kind of, kind of have to, the wire has to flow between each one. It's going to be a pain in the ass, but that's how I have to do it, this build. So before I close out this uh, video, I did want to say that this is the heat sink and housing that makersled.com sponsored me for this build for, and it's very cool the way the LEDs mount to the heat sink itself. Basically, the way it works is you see these little grooves on the end. Basically, what happens is I'm going to try not to cover up the shot, but you put a nut in that slot. This is a little bit difficult. Oh, there you go. So you put a nut in that slot. And then you use something to slide it down where you want it. And then you take a bolt with a little plastic o ring on it. And that goes into that nut. Like that. And then you take another nut, put it on the other side, put it where you want it, right there. You put another nut with a washer on it, a ring, whatever you want to call it. Oops. It is a little finicky, but it's like pretty genius. Anyway, there you go. And that is how you mount each LED. But before you do that, you put a little dot of thermal interface material, or TIM, T-I-M, thermal interface material, um, underneath the LED between the heat sink and the diode. That just transfers the heat that the diode makes to the heat sink more efficiently. So that is what the, in the next video is gonna be all about. It's gonna be assembling everything. You know, drilling a hole for the wire, just putting all the LEDs on, and then the next video will be wiring it, getting it all wired up and powered on for the first time, and then the next video will be hanging it over the tank and making a comparison between the T5HO fixture that I have on my tank now and this one. So, tonight was a huge progress maker, made a lot of progress tonight. Um, really excited about why this is turning out. It took a long time to measure this out properly. At first I tried... Uh, standard American measurements and that just didn't work so I went to the uh, metric system that worked out much better metric system all the way even though I live in California all about metric system it's just way easier anyway I'm rambling I'm gonna end the video here huge shout out to my sponsors again rapidled.com and makersled.com without them this project would not be possible um, really looking forward to any comments in the bottom in the section comment section below let me know if you have any questions comments or concerns and uh, I'm going to end this video here. Sorry it was so long, guys. I've never made a video like this before or a video series, so I know I'm rambling a lot, but I'm trying to do my best to get the information conveyed. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you made it all the way through this point, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this lengthy video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.